Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how and when to use normal approximation on a population and on a sampling distribution of a mean. A housing survey was conducted to determine the price of a typical home in Topanga, California. The mean price of a house was roughly 1.3 million with a standard deviation of 300,000. There were no houses listed below 600,000, but a few houses above 3 million. A, is the distribution of housing prices in Topanga symmetric? right skewed or left skewed. We know that there are no houses below 600,000, so that's a lower bound. That's roughly two SDs below the mean. But there are very large values that are more than five SDs above the mean. So we can see that it's not symmetric. Those very large values are going to form a right hand tail. They're going to stretch to the high values. And so the tail trails to the right which means it's a right skewed distribution. B, would you expect most houses in Topanga to cost more or less than 1.3 million? 1.3 million, remember, is the mean. So here having this sketch really helps. Um, we know that the mean follows the tail. And since we have a right tail here, a right skewed distribution, we have the mean is greater than the median. And now we know that 50% is below the median and 50% is above the median. So if 50% is less than the median and the mean is up here, then somewhat more than 50% must be less than the mean. And so most houses cost less than 1.3 million as opposed to more. C, can we estimate the probability that a randomly chosen house in Topanga is more than 1.4 million using the normal distribution? When we think about a randomly chosen house, we think about randomly selecting one value from this population of values. We can see that it's a right skewed distribution, so it's not normal. So no, we cannot use a normal distribution because the distribution is not normal. What is the probability that the mean of 60 randomly chosen houses in Topanga is more than 1.4 million? Here, instead of selecting one value, we're going to select 60 and take the mean. When we're looking at a sample mean, then we're really thinking about the sampling distribution of the mean, not of the original population. The central limit theorem tells us that as that sample size n gets larger, that distribution gets more normal. Here, our sample size of 60 is greater than 30, so by our rule of thumb, the distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal. So now we need the mean and the standard deviation of this distribution. Uh, using this notation here, we know that the mean of the sampling distribution should just be the mean of the population centered on the same value. So that's the 1,300,000. The standard deviation, however, is smaller because we divide by the square root of n. So whenever we're doing normal approximation on a mean, we have to remember to divide the standard deviation by the square root of n. Here we have the 300,000, which is the SD of the population, divided by the square root of 60. Now we're ready for a z-score. It's going to be the value of interest, 1.4 million, minus the 1.3 million, which is the mean, and then divided by this standard deviation. This gives us a z-score of 2.58. And now since we want more than, we're going to be looking for the area to the right of that value. So using whatever technology you prefer. If you're using uh, TI, you can do second bars or second distribution and choose norm CDF. Here's our lower bound. Our upper bound is some very large number like six and we'll get 0 0.0049. E, how would doubling the sample size affect the standard deviation of the mean? Recall the standard deviation of the mean has this formula. So if we increase the sample size, this is going to be smaller. And that makes sense. With a larger sample size, you should get less variability from sample to sample. Specifically, so the standard deviation would be smaller, but specifically because we're doubling it, it would be smaller or get divided by a factor of square root of two. To see an example of this, Let's say we used our sample of size 60, then we had the standard deviation is 300,000 divided by square root of 60. But if we now make the sample size 120, 
That's equivalent to saying 300,000 divided by the square root of 2, square root of 60, like this. So we can see that it's uh, square root of 2 smaller than the original standard deviation. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.